We're going to be talking today about faith. And I don't mean faith by one church to another. I'm not talking about that type of faith. I'm talking about your belief in God and what the Bible says. Amen. And in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, it said, For we are made partakers, verse 14, of Christ. We are made partakers of Jesus. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. We're made partakers of Christ and what he did for us. If we hold our faith, that don't mean that you're just going to a certain church, that you come to this church for the rest of your life and then you die in it. That isn't what it means. It said that you're made partakers of Christ, that he died for you, your sins are washed away. It's a daily thing. If you live for him until your last day, or up to your last day, when you close your eyes and you take your last breath, you have lived for Jesus. Living for Jesus is really not living for yourself. Living for Jesus is not living for yourself. Living for Jesus is living for Jesus. Okay? You heard me talk about communion, how holy it is, and a lot of people don't get taught that. They don't get taught that at all. That's important. Jesus says one of the things. He says, living for me, you've got to love me more than your mom and dad. Mother, brother, sister. You love me more than all that. How could you not live for Jesus? Or how could you live for Jesus, but love your wife more than Jesus? Or love your family more than Jesus? Or love your relatives? Or love your life more than Jesus? And a lot of people have to admit this. I guess I don't have Jesus first place. I guess I don't. Because I love my wife more than I love Jesus. And this is what Jesus said. You want to get, you want to get down what Jesus says. What everybody else says really doesn't matter. It's what does Jesus say. And you'll say, well, I've never heard that before. Well, it's in the Word. It's in the Bible. It says, says it. He says, you're not even worthy of me if you don't love me more than anything. He says, you can't partake of me unless your love is where it should be. And I will say this, it's a growing, it's a growing thing that goes on in your life. And Jesus doesn't look to you and say, oh, so you came to me yesterday. Do you love me more? Well, I don't have anything to do with you unless I'm number one. Jesus, Jesus is like this. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work with you all the way up to that last day. But before that last day, I really want you to get in your life where you love me more than anything. And not only that, you even love your enemies. It's like, Jesus, help me. Because I hate my enemies. I want them to pass on. A few of them. <laughs> and Jesus, this is what God's all about. God actually changes you as a person. He changes you. And you start looking to God in a different way. You look to him for the most crazy things like, God, get me a new job, and I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go, but you know. You know where there's a better job. I'm not treated right where I'm at. Not only that, I don't make enough money. I need you, God. And all at once, somehow, some way, you hear wind of a job. You just say, well, I guess I was in the right place at the right time. That's God. That's God. You just happened to walk into Ace Hardware and heard somebody talking. Just as crazy as that. And the devil right away says, you know how you got a little bit of that inside you? It was going to happen anyway. Quit giving credit to God. You know, we have to start making a stand and say, no, that's God. It's like Mackenzie. You know, you, you, you listen to what she has to say. We looked all day for that bellfold and it's right on the bathroom floor with the credit card on top. It, I'll tell you what. Now, first of all, that's God. But what is God saying? Why couldn't God have just said, listen, you won't need to pray to me. I just want, I'll just, I'll just 
put the billfold there. Hey, I'm not, you don't have to give me praise or anything. No, God's in our life. He wants to be real in our life. Why is that? Because God wants you to look to him and said, we're going to do more things in your life than find a billfold. I want you to look to me for the most ridiculous things. And I'm going to put them on your heart, those crazy things. Like that backache going away when you pray. Stuff like that. Like you can share your faith with somebody that you've been around your whole life. And he gives you the news, I'm full of cancer. And you bring him to Jesus because you've been walking with God long enough that you seem to have the words to say now. You give hope to the hopeless. In Hebrews 4, 2, we see that all this must be mixed with faith. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not everybody that hears what I'm saying today is going to profit them. It must be mixed with faith. You must believe what I'm saying. You must believe that it's possible for you to walk with God in such a way that you would pray and things would happen. That God hears your prayers. That God hears the cry of your heart. I have to tell this, and I know James doesn't mind, but this was a testimony to his faith. He says this, he says, he had this wart on the bottom of his feet, a planter's wart, and he had it for several years and it grew deeper and deeper and now it's in it's in that deep and uh, I told him I says you gotta you gotta you gotta go to the doctor man you gotta get this thing cut out I mean you're getting so deep up in there you might they cut it out they'll cut nerves and you will walk around limping you know I'm just trying to give him some help and, and he's there picking at it <laughs> quit picking your ward on my couch okay <laughs> golly I got a garage for that type of stuff so anyway <laughs> he says it's it's too high I said well I went out in the garage got a drill and they had an emery on it and there I am drilling it you got to see the and Sue got a picture of it and there I am drilling it or actually buffing it off and I'm thinking what I do for this guy anyway so he's on his way to North Dakota up there by the way, his nickname is Dakota. And he's going up to, to work in North Dakota. And I, and I believe this is how it went down. But anyway, these were his words. God, I want you to be real to me. I want you to do something in my life that you are real to me. So he calls like a week or two later and says, this is after having the dumb wart for how many years? It's gone. It started dying. It's gone. I want you to do something that I know you're real. So, I, and I, I thank God every day because now I haven't got pieces of this and that and I find in the carpet, James has been here. There's a wart or whatever that is. <laughs> but just think of that. One, he was one, he's been one prayer away from having something go on in his life that does take a doctor. And yet God said well I can do that he was just wanting God to be real so now his faith should be in a place I know God is real and when he runs up against something else or he sees something else where people need he remembers you did that for me I know you can do this you did that I know you can do this see the old Bible verse in Hebrews 11.6 it says but without faith without faith this type of faith 
It is impossible to please God. You can't make God happy unless you believe this, that he's by your side and watching you. He wants to help you. He wants to love on you. He cares when you're hurting. He, he understands your insecurities. And God, I just hate these insecurities because it's, it makes me a different person. I get angry and I'm also insecure. God, help me. And God says, well, I can take that away too. Oh, I thought you just took away warts. You're the wart God. No, I'm an everything God. I'm everything. And he says, you can't even please God unless you believe that he wants to do for you. He, listen to this. For he that comes to God, that'd be you, must believe that he is, he is God. He's God. That means Russia's not God. China's not God. U.S. is not God. Our president isn't. Well, if he orders, God's God. You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you seek God and you're just by yourself, you go, God, I want you real in my life. God says, I like that. And I'm going to reward you for that. However that would be. You, go, you can be looking. Somehow God's going to reward me. And God says, well, how would you like to be rewarded? Well, I just want to know you better. Or I got a situation here. I need you in it. I need you in it. And it won't go away. I can't stop this thing. And it could be about somebody else. or it doesn't matter. God says, I can do that. I can do that. He's trying to win your heart. That's all it is. That's all what it is. He's trying to win your heart. That he would be number one in your life. You make him number one. You start making everything else like it should be. You know how some guys have their job before their family? Where's dad? Hey, he's, he's working. Where's dad? He's working. Where's dad? Well, he's always working. Well, now he's golfing. Where is dad? He's never around. Why? When he starts making God number one, God says, hey, you're to be with your family today. Now it's time. You know God makes time for everything? You know that? God makes time for everything. You can work overtime and still do all those other things too that you're supposed to do. He makes time for everything. That's what kind of God he is. Let me go back to Hebrews 3.15. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, don't harden your heart as the Israelites did in the desert. If you, if you feel the tug of God today on your heart, if you feel the impression of God, the Bible says, don't harden your heart. What, what do you mean harden your heart? That old attitude. That ain't God. That's me. This can't be God. This can't be God. Mother's Day? Take my wife out to eat? Bull. Oh, that ain't God. <laughs> be nice to my wife or be nice to my kid. No favorites? Well, this other one's been this black sheep. Nail him, that's what I think. Let him learn. God says, I don't want you to do that. I want, to win, I want you to win him over with love now. I want you to win her over with love. I want you to heal everything now. You know, some people, this is how some people are. Some people think this. If I just get mad one more time, if I just get mad one more time, that will do it. Because that's why you're mad. And why hasn't it worked before? All that anger and all that is tore down this, tore down that. And yet, we, can, we think, I'll just get angry one more time. You've got to quit doing what doesn't work. Amen? You've you got to do what works. And God gives us some lessons here. 
while it is said today, if you will hear his voice or his prompting, harden not your heart. Don't keep rejecting possibilities in your life. If you will hear his voice today and you feel like, um, and you have those moments where I really need to do this. I really need to start doing this. Don't a day later harden your heart. Just say, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Things that God wants you to do are door openings to change your life. I'm going to read this to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, As it is written, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, the ears have not even heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. People haven't even heard about it, haven't seen it. You tell me that wouldn't take faith for you to do some things in God? People don't do that. You've been brought up in a, uh, in a way that if I don't see it, I can't believe it. And Jesus said, more blessed is a man that believes and hasn't seen. This whole faith is like walking with God, being prompted by God, being close to God is different than what the world teaches. Because eyes haven't even seen it. Ears haven't heard it. Hasn't even entered into the heart of God. And God says to you, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pray for your boss and ask him, can I pray for you? Oh. Well, what are you going to pray? Well, I know you got a very sick baby at home and I just wanted to pray for you and pray with you. I prayed for a person just a few months ago. They called me and said, would you, would you pray for us? And it was a person over in Indiana. They had the thermometer in the mouth or up the rectum of the little kid. I don't know. doesn't really matter, does it? The mother said, call him so he can pray for us. The child's got a very high temperature. I don't know, it's like 103 or 4 or something like that. She watched it go down. She watched it go down while we were on the phone. She says, I watched it go down. God can do the impossible things. And he tells me, he says, she says it's going down. I go, really? Really? I mean, I do believe and I do believe to pray. How much faith does it take? I believe if you'll just make a stand and pray, you'll see, I mean, how much faith did James, the wart man, how, how much faith did he have? Uh, and we're, and we're not going to give you that as your handle. You're still Dakota. How much faith did he have? He says, God, I just want you to be real. How much faith does it take to move God? It just doesn't take very much. Just enough to say, I'm going to give you a chance, God. And after a while, you'll say, no, God will help me. Like Mackenzie says, she says, when I lose something, I've just learned to pray to God. And how loving is God? Would you say you're the, a very religious person? <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> yeah. But look what God's doing for you. Look at what God's doing for you. Does he not love you? He does love you. And what's he doing? He says, come to me. Just come. And, and believe that I want good for you. But God has revealed them the things that he wants for us unto us by the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. What's deep down in the Father's heart. What's deep down in the Father's heart. Don't, your life, don't you want your life to be more than this? Work hard, raise a bunch of kids, and then die. Oh, you've played golf a few times. Shot some clay pigeons. Been here, been there, but don't you want your life to be more than that? That plus, let's put it that way. Nothing wrong with shooting clay pigeons, all right? Nothing 
wrong with going boar hunting down south. All those things are okay. But you want your life to be alive. Praise God. You want a relationship with God and say, that man worked miracles. How would you like people coming to your, I hate to say it, your wake, but saying there was nobody like him? He did this, he did that for me, he prayed for me, he was in tune with the Lord. And I know if I make it to heaven, I will see that man there because he did the work of Jesus. Isn't that, why, isn't that how you want to be remembered? Or do you want to be remembered as the old tyrant? I take your eyes out of you. It says here, but the natural man, he doesn't see these things. No, you're not natural. You're supernatural. God is not a natural God. He operates in a different realm, and he wants you to operate there too. Will he give you everything you ask? No. He always wants you to know it's not you that does it. It's him. So you'll find th some things, a lot of things, he never really gives you. And you go, God, what's going on? And God says, it's just the way I decided to do it. But look at all the things God is willing to give you and has given you. You tell me there's not a God. Are we taking the credit? Remember Satan? God made Satan. He made him so beautiful and he looked in the mirror one day. I don't know if they had mirrors in heaven, but he, he beheld his own beauty and he says, man, I'm so good looking. <laughs> and he says, I'll take God's throne. I don't need God. I'm beautiful. That's how that whole thing went down. And he convinced a third of the angels that they didn't need God either. So if we have a little tendency sometimes to say, I'll be okay. No, you won't be okay. You won't be okay. You need God. And whether you understand him, all the ins and outs of your life, you, you won't. There's going to be some things you'll get to heaven and you go, hey, I don't even think you'll ask him, but if you do, you go, why? Why, why? why was it so hard, God? Why didn't you make it easier? And God says, that kept you on your knees. And it kept you right with me. And you know what? You'll understand that. And you'll say, thank you, God. For those things that were so hard, they were my best friend. Isn't that neat? You'll find that out. Seems like when we see our own possibilities by ourselves and not with God, we become a stranger to the Lord. We may live our whole life and be a stranger to God. And you mention God to somebody and they go, God. Yeah, God. And it's all about knowing Jesus. That's why God says, and we know in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together to the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to its purpose. All things work according to God's will and for our good, amen? For those who love God. And that's the key. And that's the key. And what's the other key? That we would know Jesus. That we'd be acquainted with Jesus. That we'd be acquainted with the presence of God. I tell people, I says, get in the presence of the Lord. Put a little music on or however you want to do it. But get in the presence of God, however it gets. And it'll change your life. Little by little by little. You'll, you'll get up off your knees as a different person. Because God's, it, God is this. He's all about changing you in your heart. And all the ones you find yourself, you're just more loving than you have been before. And all those things that bother you, they just kind of fade away. Not that you won't get angry about something, but it doesn't haunt you all the time. It's like, no, I don't even think about that anymore. I can think about it, but I learned there's just, it's a waste of time. Amen? And it's all about Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He can be one prayer away, just like James was one prayer away with the heel in his foot. 
you can be one prayer away from knowing God. For God coming into your life and say, I will make myself real to you. That you would say, God, Jesus, I want you to be real in my life. I want you to come into my heart and I want to be different. Yeah, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm, I'm, I know I've been a creep different times. And I know, forgive me of those sins. David said, forgive me of the sins of my youth. But everybody's done stuff. They don't want to go uptown and tell them everybody about it. It's like, we hide that stuff. But the thing is, God knows that stuff. And it's just one prayer away from God, you asking God, please forgive me. Let the blood of Jesus wash him away. And I purpose in my heart to change things. I purpose in my heart to change today. God, I'll need your help though. I'll need your help. And if you do that, the Holy Spirit will come in and your life will start changing and you'll start understanding God in a new light in a new way you got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior Amen. he's got to be Savior but he's your Lord also Amen